Welcome to the Swim Swim podcast. I'm your I'm today's host Yan Yan Lee, and with me is the 2023 World Championships bronze medalist in the women's 100 fly, Tori Husk. Tori, how are you doing? I'm good. So, what have you been up to since the end of World Championships? Um, I've been doing a lot of traveling. I went to Okinawa, and there was actually a typhoon while I was there. I went to Tokyo, and I hiked Mount Fuji. And then I went back home, went to the beach for a little bit, then spent some time with my family and friends. And then now I'm back at Stanford. Mm-hmm. So I do want this podcast to primarily be about worlds, but I do want to go and touch back on nationals and the preparation prior to nationals. The last time you spoke with us, it was around May and it was before you started tapering. What was the what was your preparation like? for nationals in June yeah I think that my preparation from that about like for nationals was a little bit different than usual just because I had a crazy course schedule that quarter um so I think we kind of had to like change some things and like like there were days when I was just I would just show up to practice and I was already really tired so um yeah it was a little bit different that quarter Mm mm-hmm yeah, I, I remember you mentioned in an interview at Nationals that you were coming off a very stressful academic quarter at Stanford. Finals was right before Nationals, right? Yeah, it was a week before. Yeah, so can you go into like specifically how academics affected your training come time for a big meet? Because I think this is the first time you've ever had to deal with a situation like that where finals come so close to that trials meet yeah um I mean it was definitely difficult but it's like not the first time I've been in a tough school situation I mean NC's I think either last year or this year I think it might have been right before or during finals week I think my freshman year it was during and I think that this year it was the week after or it might have been the week before finals I'm not really sure but like I feel like learning to adjust with school is always kind of difficult but um this year I'm obviously taking a gap year so it's going to be kind of nice just because I'm going to be able to really focus on swimming and my I won't have to worry about the academic side of things so I'll just train and that will be my primary focus so I think that that will help me really um laser in kind of on the year yeah for sure that's definitely a big burden that's been lifted for the next coming year yeah so at nationals, you were fifth in the 100 free, you were won the 100 fly, and then you tied your personal best in the 50 fly, finishing second. Just overall, what were your thoughts on your performances at nationals? Yeah, I didn't think my swims at nationals were that good. I didn't think they were that bad. It was kind of very like middle of the road. Uh, I had a lot of hope for worlds, and at that, like, worlds was obviously a little bit disappointing for me but I'm very hopeful for the future and I'm I think that this could have been this might have been actually good for me my experience both at champ trials and at worlds because I feel like it really taught me what I need to focus on this year Mm -hmm. so after nationals you go into training camp which is a week after nationals and this isn't your first training camp since you've been at other international meets but Mm -hmm. I'm curious about how was this specific training camp with Team USA at Singapore different from other training camps that you've been to yeah it was definitely really different just because of the timing of things like I couldn't really go back up in my training that much because we had a meet in two weeks like after champ trials ended there was two weeks so I couldn't really like up my mileage or my work or anything at that point and I think that ended up really hurting me just because um like I was dying at the end of my races and I was just I think I was more like fatigued than usual and I think that's because just the way it laid out and yeah I think that it was definitely really different just because I was on I was tapering for so long Mm -hmm. Do you think you were negatively negatively affected by this short turnaround between trials and worlds? Um, well, I don't think it really helped, but 
I mean, you never really know exactly. Yeah. And I'm curious, just not just from a swimming perspective, but there was a lot of talk about the travel from nationals and the U.S. to a place like Singapore and then going from Singapore to Japan. I remember uh, we had Kaylee McEwen on the podcast and she said she heard from a lot of U.S. Mm -hmm. athletes that said they were tired coming from training camp. Did you experience anything of that sort? I don't really notice the travel as much, I feel like, um, at least not in practice. Like, sure, maybe it had an effect. I'm not really sure. But, like, it's not, like, something that I, like, actively noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm curious, just another question about training camp. Greg, your coach, Greg Meehan, mm -hmm. decided not to go. And he was there um in Budapest last year and then he was there in Tokyo what was your experience like not being with your primary coach um honestly I mean I've been to meets before without a coach uh when I was going into the Olympics in 2021 I mean yes Greg was my coach he was going to be my coach but he wasn't currently the one who had like coached me up until that point so in a way he was still a new coach because before that it was Evan Stiles on Arlington Aquatic Club so it's not really like my first experience having um a coach not be there for me at an international meet I think at short course worlds this year and also this um the year before that in Abu Dhabi and Australia I didn't have like Greg didn't come along during that and it's fine because I feel like I know what I need to do and I know like what I need to take care of and I mean, he's obviously communicating, like Brayden was my coach at the speed and he was obviously communicating pretty much every day um, with Brayden about like what I needed and everything. So I honestly don't really think that affected me that much. And I totally understand why Greg did it also. I mean, there's a lot of like, we have a new assistant coach and I feel like he needed to be there for the team just to help kind of make everything run smoothly. So, yeah. I think that the team needed him. Yeah, that makes total sense. And I did forget about Tokyo in a sense where you, Greg technically wasn't your coach then. But yeah, that, that makes total sense. You said that Braden was your primary coach at mm -hmm. um, training camp. So were you training with his NC State swimmers? Um, Occasionally I would do a practice with one of them. But for the most part, I was training on my own. Mm -hmm. So you start off Worlds with a double in the very first session, the 105 pre prelims, and then you swam on prelims of the 4x100 relay. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first time you've started off a meet with a double, a senior international long course meet with the double. So what was that like? Oh, uh, I feel like I've gone to meets before. I think that Worlds last year might have been I think the hundred fly might have been on the first day. Yeah. So well, I think I might have had a double then. But I think that I'm pretty used to racing a lot. And like at the Tier Pro series, I was swimming so many events. And I think that and same in Australia, like I was just swimming like an absurd amount of events. And I feel like I was like prepared for that in that sense. Yeah, I remember you coming on the podcast to talk about how doing so many events at those pro series helps you for these large big meet schedules and when I meant starting off a meet with the double because I remember last year your first session of because you weren't on the prelims four by 100 last year so mm -hmm. yeah, I meant like your very first session oh um, yeah mm -hmm. maybe I don't really remember but yeah I don't think I did that at worlds last year but I might have done it at like short course worlds one of the years I'm not really sure Mm -hmm. I so, don't remember that. <laughs> how do you feel like you carried yourself through the that prelims round and then semifinals at night? I think that prelims, at least like the first race, is kind of the most nerve wracking in a way, just because it's your first race and you don't really know what to expect. But I feel like once you have that kind of out of the way, it gets a lot easier throughout the meet. And obviously it gets a lot harder in other aspects, like physically, sometimes like mental fatigue um at least like your first race you're still like really fresh mentally and physically 
um but it's also like very nerve-wracking so I don't know I feel like this is something that I've just learned to navigate in a way and I've learned to like regulate my emotions so mm-hmm. yeah so headed into the 100 fly final you had the world leading time you're defending world champion what was your mindset and what were your expectations headed into mm-hmm. that final yeah I just wanted to race as well as I could and put together as good of a race as I could and yeah I mean that was pretty much it (laughs) obviously it would have been really nice to go a good like a best time which is what I was hoping for but I think that this was a really big learning experience for me can you take me through the specifics of that 100 fly final um (laughs) Now, I don't really remember the exact race as much just because I I feel like I kind of like blank out during most of my races. But I think that it taught me a lot about like what I need to work on this year, like my back half and also like my turns and finishes. I'm pretty sure my finish was really long in that one or it might have been a semi. I'm not really sure. I don't remember. But um, yeah, I really need to like hone in on the small details. So. Mm -hmm. that makes sense well I think I know you said you want to go a best time but then also I feel like in the moment everyone's so focused on racing not focused on time even though you didn't go best time Maggie McNeil and uh Zhang Yufei neither of them went yeah so it's like you can't really control that in the moment Mm -hmm. yeah um the heat was I don't know if anyone won a best time in that heat I feel like at least for me it was a little bit off but um I know that next year everyone's gonna be really on it so (laughs) I'm also gonna have to be really on it yeah so after the 100 fly you race your first relay final which is the mixed medley relay and you were swimming Mm -hmm. on the fly leg of that can you talk about your leg on that mixed medley relay yeah, that, it fell apart very fast. I started off very not strong by almost DQing the relay. If you, like, slow down the video, you can actually see, like, I, like, had, like, fully swung. And then, I like, on the blocks, I remember thinking, oh, my God, like, if I go right now, I will DQ the relay. So I did, like, this little, like, half step kind of. And then it was a legal start, but, like, my entry in the water after that, like, weird step, I just went like straight down and then I this is where it honestly went wrong is I started like panicking and I've had this happen before I should like learn my lesson um but I started panicking and I was like okay I have like so much ground to make up because I went like straight down so then my first 50 I just like cranked it and I you could see that I felt it my second half and it was a really disappointing swim and I mean like I said I've learned this lesson before like NC's my freshman year I had a really weird start in prelims in the 100 free and I like got in my head about it during the race and that affected my swim instead of just like sticking to my normal race plan I freaked out and I did something different and that's just not what you're supposed to do when you're racing so it sucks that I had to learn that lesson again but at least now I've like mentally cataloged it so yeah so after that race on the NBC Peacock live stream, the camera panned in on you explaining something or speaking to your teammates uh, after the relay. Can you tell me a little bit more about what was going on and the communication between you and your teammates after that relay? I honestly don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> like that was such a small moment. I have no idea what I was saying, so. Mm. So, after having experienced that sort of panic after a race and both at this meet and then at NC's your freshman year, how do you move forward from that? Like, I guess, and like, what do you take from these experiences? Yeah, I mean, it was definitely difficult to move on after that race, but I was lucky that I had another, like a full day of recovery in between before I had another event. And I think that block of time kind of helped me collect myself a little bit. But 
it was definitely really difficult this time. Mm. So yeah, you mentioned having to recover from that swim and that wasn't the end of the, your meet. You still had the 50 fly left. How, what did you do specifically to try and like pick yourself up after a swim that you weren't necessarily super happy about? Mm -hmm. I called Greg first. I think he was one of the first people I called to discuss like kind of like what went wrong and just like my plans for the future and stuff like that. Um, And that was helpful. And then what else did I do? I think that by like calling people from home, it was kind of helpful Um, just because I know that they really care about me and um, it's just like comforting to like hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. Was there any specific advice that anyone gave you that really stuck out? Um, One thing that Greg said is that it's like just one meet. I had a really good year of training and really good meets leading up to this. Like My Pac-12 meet was about the same as like my freshman year. And then NCs, I had some really big time drops in a lot of my events. So it's not like I am plateauing necessarily. It was just like one really off meet for me. And this is like not typical, but like the rest of the year leading up to this meet up until like the spring quarter when I was just so overwhelmed with school, I had like really good swimming and I and like this one meet kind of doesn't really define you so that was helpful yeah I totally agree with that I think sometimes people get so wrapped up in one result that they forget about everything that came before that and it's good that you recognize that this one difficult meet didn't prove that you were I guess like done for in terms of improving Mm mm-hmm Yeah. So how do you feel like the rest of the meet went for you? Because you had two more events left. You swam the 50 fly, you finished fifth. Mm -hmm. And then you, which is one place higher than you placed last year in the 50 fly, I believe. And then you swam on prelims of the medley relay. Yeah, I think that after that event, I mean, my confidence was definitely rattled. Um, My 50 fly, I feel like I never really know how to swim that event. And I honestly feel like that event is not really a good way to like judge my swimming just because the 50 fly is not really something that I like train for or anything. It's kind of just um, something that I happen to do also, I guess, at those meets. Um, So I wasn't like really happy with that event. I wasn't like upset. It was kind of just very middle of the road. And then the relay was like fine. I mean, (laughs) I was definitely really like not only like I wasn't as much like physically tired at the end of the meet. I think I was more like mentally tired and just during my races, I would fatigue faster. Um, But overall, the second half of the meet was pretty like subpar. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Yeah. Mm. Is there anything you feel like you could have done better technique wise in your relay swims? Yeah, obviously my starts need a lot of work. I think that, um, yeah, my relay starts, I definitely need to work on them a little bit more. And um, I've always had this problem, but my start, uh, my turns and finishes, I think that my glides were a little bit long in some of them. So I'm definitely going to be focusing on that more this year. And also really like, like snapping my like feet kind of in like my underwaters and just not having like having good like aggressive underwaters I think is something that I need to like focus more on yeah so you've talked about this a little bit throughout our conversation but now that world is over how is the meat sitting with you now that you've had a few weeks to reflect on what happened Yeah, uh, I think that it kind of got me excited to train again and to get back in shape. I just started last week. Um, The week before that, I was like kind of like getting in the water, but not really like training that hard. But I just started getting back in shape and I'm kind of like more excited to like prove myself this year. Yeah, absolutely. And going off of that, how has this me specifically changed your outlook on the Paris Olympics? Um, 
I mean, it hasn't really changed my outlook that much. I mean, I know it's going to be really tough to make it. And then if I did make it, it would be obviously the competition is really good. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't really changed my outlook in that sense. Mm. Well, I meant in terms of like motivation, like does having this like step back, like fuel you even more for? Yeah, I think that it's difficult, but I think that maybe this is what I needed. Mm -hmm. And I I do think that it will make me more driven this year. So, mm. yeah. So headed into this red shirt year, there's obviously been a lot of big changes to the Stanford program because mm -hmm. Claire Curzon, one of your main training partners, transferred to Virginia, and I remember you saying that you were planning on living with her mm -hmm. uh, this semester, and then also Tracy left and Katie Robinson's coming in so with all these program changes what is your outlook on just this upcoming year at Stanford yeah I'm actually still very excited for it and I think that um these changes like they're not necessarily like scary because I feel like Greg has been communicating a lot and I've been communicating kind of what I need from him so I have like a lot of faith in our program and the people there. So I'm not really that concerned about that aspect just because I feel like I've been communicating a lot with my coaches. Mm -hmm. What does this next year and your next few in the months look like in terms of training and meets? Like, are you, do you plan on going to any meets this winter and this fall season? And what does that look like for you? Yeah. Um, I actually just had a meeting today with Greg about this. So I have a lot of meets, I think in the like October to like December timeframe kind of, we're still trying to figure out a few meets and just like the logistics of like going and stuff like that. But I think I'm definitely gonna go to like winter nationals mm -hmm. and then maybe a couple meets before then, a lot of the tier pro series. Um, in the months after that. And I mean, we always go to the OTC during the winter. And I think there's another time that we're gonna go to the OTC. I can't remember exactly. But um, yeah, I think that there's a lot of meets kind of in the first like block and then a lot of training and the next block leading up to the Olympics. Yeah, when you talked about having meets in October, do you plan on going to the World cup stops in Europe this fall yeah that was one of the things we were discussing and I'm not exactly sure if I go like how many because I think it's Berlin Athens and then a third one I don't remember but I'm not really sure like how many weeks of that I would go to yet we're still trying to like figure out the plan for that mm -hmm. yeah um do you plan on going to or I guess considering the 2024 world in Doha if you get the opportunity mm -hmm. that meet um I'm not sure yet just because I feel like that would be a really good block of training um so that's gonna be something I think we play by ear kind of and just see what I need at that time um that was definitely also in discussion but I'm not really sure yet if I'm gonna go to that or not Mm -hmm. Or if even, like, they haven't named the team. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, headed into this Olympic year, obviously, you're going to be training full-time and long. Are you training full-time and long course? Um, No. We're also going to have some short course swimming, I think, Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoons, and then maybe some mornings, like, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm not really sure exactly. I don't remember the schedule exactly. <laughs> but um, yes, I'm still going to be doing short course, especially like Fridays and Mondays. Like I said, um, we usually do power. So that's always short course. Um, yeah, but Tuesdays and Thursdays um, during the collegiate season, we normally swim short course, but that's going to be changed to long course for me. And Saturdays, I think might be long course, but I'm not sure. Yes. Well, not training full-time long course, but I guess not being on the NCA schedule and being the one person on your team not being on that schedule, I guess 
what do you think like that's going to be like like are you what is your outlook on that kind of situation yeah I don't think it's going to be that bad actually just because we have some people going to Pan Ams so they're going to be training a lot of long course and they're going to try to swim also on Tuesdays Thursdays with me and they're going to try to like arrange their class schedule um around that so hopefully they get into the classes that they want uh I'm not really sure about the winter quarter yet um, about what people will do because that's when they're racing. And then spring quarter, we might have some people take off. I'm not really sure what their plan is or like who's going to do that, but I don't think it will be that bad. Mm. Okay. So I just have a few more questions and then we can wrap this up. You talked about this a little bit when you came on the podcast in May, uh, when you said you were looking forward to I guess, pursuing a lot of hobbies outside of swimming since you're not taking any classes. Is there anything that you're doing or planning on doing outside of swimming in the next coming months? Yeah. Um. So I just got to Stanford yesterday and I just went to the grocery store and bought a lot of stuff for the week. And then today I'm just going to kind of arrange my room and really like organize it. And then after that, I want to maybe sign up for like a ceramics class or like a glass blowing class just like locally in the area and just like do a lot of art this year and a lot of different like projects and stuff. So I have a lot of stuff, just like little things like that. It seems like you're really in it, like art and stuff like that. Yeah. I just like, I need something I feel like to pass the time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And it's not really related to what we've been discussing, but the 200 I am, you went a personal best at, nationals chose to do the 2im 50 free double there what mm -hmm. is do you plan on pursuing the event seriously for olympic trials um i think that it's definitely something that i want to swim and it's definitely something i'm going to train for just because it's good to keep your options open one and then two i am tra training i feel like is really beneficial to my swimming just it helps keep me in shape in kind of like all my strokes and i think that also benefits like my freestyle and my fly um and I feel like I also just really like I am training because I like the variety in the practice so it's definitely something that we're going to continue doing this year and are you, you're swimming at Olympic trials right um I think so that's the plan I mean right now I'm hoping to swim a lot of different things at Olympic trials and just keep my options open but I mean obviously like closer to the day we might decide that this is something I do want to swim or don't want to swim but as of right now yes that is something I would like to swim at trials I remember you mentioned last year on our podcast that training for IM and longer distance events helps with just getting less fatigue in your sprint races do mm -hmm. you think that's come to fruition after a year of additional training in these longer distance events um, I think that in general, yes, I think that spring quarter kind of threw me off, but I think that it wasn't really anything to do with swimming. I think it was more to do with like the course load I took on, but I think in general, yes, like I've seen results from it. Mm -hmm. And then final question, but you mentioned before with your races, like sometimes you panic like when something doesn't go your way and you're trying to like improve mm -hmm. on that. What are you, are you working on anything mentally this year just to improve your swimming? Um, I don't really know like mentally if I'm like working on specific things, but I feel like your experiences when you kind of like fail at something kind of teaches you something in itself. So I definitely learned a lot and I'm going to be practicing more on those little things that I like have like messed up on. And I think that that will help me like build the confidence again. Mm -hmm. Well, Tori, thank you so much for coming on to this podcast and discussing what may have not been the greatest me for you. I'm, I'm really appreciative that you were able to give your perspective because I know it's not really easy to talk about this sort of stuff. So again, I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.